All right, boys, the trial for the three men that killed X is about to be finished very soon. And today we got closing arguments from the state attorney and two of the defense lawyers. We all know Diedrich's lawyer. He's just extremely cringe. I know he's doing his job and all that, but a few interesting points pop up that lead to a lot more context on this case. So stick around for the end of the video for that, boys. Williams waited for Boatwright and Newsom to rob and kill the victim. When the two gunmen jump out of the Dodge journey, Williams didn't drive off. He's waiting for them. That's to assist them to get away. So she's talking straight to the jury, trying to convince them that everyone worked together and they were a team. Diedrich, the getaway driver, is as much involved as the two uh, gunmen. He killed the victim. What does he do? He assists them by getting getting away so that they can evade detection. Oh, right, approaching the victim's side of the car at gunpoint, while Newsom approaches the passenger side at gunpoint. Think about this. Why is that? The victim can't get away from either the driver's side or the, the passenger side. He can't go forward with his car because Williams blocks him off. So the three of them are coordinating an attack to be able to rob and kill the victim in that moment. Would Dietrich Williams have been able to commit this homicide and armed robbery without Michael Boltwright and Trayvon Newsom? I don't think so. Would Michael Boltwright have been able to commit this homicide and armed robbery without Dietrich Williams and Trayvon Newsom? Would Trayvon Newsom have been able to commit this homicide and armed robbery without Dietrich Williams and Michael Boltwright? If you're able to answer each question is no, then you're applying the principle theory correctly. She's so good at her job. The death was caused by the criminal act of Deidre Williams, Trayvon Newsom, Michael Boatwright. If 12 of you decide that the defendants are guilty of first degree murder, then you can vote and deliberate and say that they're guilty. God, it is a lot of pressure to be one of these 12 people that has to decide this. And so did by his actions and his co-defendants actions take property of value. I think that is without question. $50,000 is property of value. Great mind without regard to human life. I submit to it as shooting someone in the neck and then leaving them for dead. Caller of the gunman is Michael Boatwright. The fact that Michael Boatwright's phone was tracked on Bluetooth to be connected to the car the entire time and his like phone location was tracked there, just that seals the deal for me. Always got the turtlenecks on. She's another customer. She said that she was also eyewitness to the homicide. He looks he really uncomfortable. Um, he looks so uncomfortable right now. Tanisha Clark, consistent with the other testimony that and the other evidence that you heard, identifies the correct vote right. Okay? So this is not something that should be considered as doubtful on her part. It should actually be considered as positive evidence of and beyond reasonable doubt that she identified the right person in this case. Talking about the person that they rented the car from, Michael went and got the rental car. You're not gonna go rent a car and not be one of the people that was in the car during the murder. The renting of the car, and this is a common sense approach, what purpose was that for? It wasn't to go to Disney World. It wasn't to hook, hook, hitch a trailer to it so that they can go motorbike riding in this car that was rented for one day, and one day only, not for a trip. They remained in Broward County. This is apparently a common thing people do is rent cars to commit crimes in. But like at the end of the day, it's gonna be tracked back to you no matter what. You're a fucking idiot if you do that. Within this book bag, you have three boxes of 22 caliber of yellow brand ammo. You have the mask. I guarantee these boys did other robberies in the past too and got away with it. I don't think they killed anyone because they're too dumb to get away with that, but they probably robbed people in the past for sure. Single 22 caliber live bullet from Dietrich Williams' master bedroom. Why would Dietrich have a 22 caliber bullet in his house, bro? You are an idiot. The same bullet that they used in the murder and he kept it in his house. Well, obviously he probably didn't know it fell back there, but come on, bro. Oh, here's X's uh, jacket and sweater and shit. Consistent with the defects in the clothing and the testimony that he heard from the medical examiner that Mr. Onford was wearing his clothing and the defects are consistent with him being seated in the driver's seat and being shot in the neck. The text message and evidence linking um, Trayvon Newsom to the co-defendants and you'll recall John Curcio's testimony that he said that the text message read, I buried it at my house and I get you pregnant and stay out here and soon gone, have to dig up the money. I got the 8,000 buried. Real shit. I be thinking I'm a catch life, but I bury that. Bro did not text, I'm a bury that about half of his money because he got 15 grand i believe and he wanted to bury eight grand so he buried it somewhere and i don't believe they ever found it so there's eight thousand dollars buried somewhere this fucking idiot thinks he's ever gonna get to use like bro you are not gonna get to use that ever yeah this is where he f***ed up where he yelled at uh the guy that's snitching on them and calling him a snitch when he walked by and shit call him a and all that nonsense that shows that you're guilty because why would you call someone a snitch if you didn't do it you wouldn't have called them a snitch you would have been like bro why are you lying why are you tell them who actually murdered them i didn't do it if not them then who because there isn't any dna that's a good point they keep bitching that there's no dna on x's neck so how can you say my clients were there if there's no dna because they were trying to grab his uh chain and she just said if there's no dna then who else would it would have been then it's just like there's no dna at all 
on the chain. That's like, oh my gosh, these defendants are not guilty because there's no DNA on the defendants or the victim's neck. It should be considered with all other evidence because there's a lot of other very compelling evidence that does prove their guilt. DNA might be on them, it might not. DNA's this big. At no point in time were there any stops to Trayvon Newsom's home, which would be obvious either as a pickup or a drop off. When you see the taller gunman who's pointing, I submit you the 22 caliber rifle, and we know that because remember, right here is where the casings end up. And that's Michael Bolt, right? And that is Trayvon Newsom, because there's no stops, obvious stops, dropping off or picking up Trayvon Newsom. And that in the car driving is Egypt Williams and in the backseat is Robert Allen. And the location data from Michael Bolt right and They got these boys tracked, man. They're so done for. We all know what's going to happen soon, but like, it's just crazy how dumb they are, man. That's him. Not only because of location data, but you'll recall, his phone was connected to the Bluetooth of the car the entire time of the homicide. And in order for your phone to be disconnected, this is common sense. You walk away far enough, your phone disconnects and then connects to the next Wi-Fi connection. But look at how close he is to the car. Close enough that his phone is connected the entire time while the victim is being gunned down and robbed. God, Trayvon always looks so uncomfortable. Like, look, he just uncomfortable vibes from his face every time I see him. They waited outside for X, so they had eight minutes to think about what they're going to do. Eight long minutes. And that's how they're trying to go for the premeditated murder thing, because think about how long eight minutes is. She talks about the bullets that were shot right here. This is really important. Were cycled through and fired from the same firearm. That's important, ladies and gentlemen. And I, that evidence from Dietrich Williams home the fire casings that were found near the victim's car and the fire projectiles are from the same murder weapon. And so even though the defendants tried to get rid of the firearm to try to avoid detection, what they left behind still connects them to the homicide because all of that evidence was cycled through the same firearm. Dumbasses. And there's something else to note. The three boxes of 22 a Gila brand ammo from Michael Boatwright's home, which is State's Exhibit 46, in each box, you can count them. You can take this back with you. You know how many's missing? Four. Only four. And the only four that are missing. I didn't know that. They found a box of bullets in Michael Boatwright's car and only four bullets were missing. One is a partial that was taken from the victim. The other is a fire projectile recovered from the, the third is a fire 22 caliber projectile recovered from the victim's uh, body at autopsy. And then the live bullet recovered from Diedrich Williams' home. Oh, one of the, the last bullet was the bullet that was at Diedrich's house. Why did Diedrich have a bullet? Dumbass. Two plus two equals four. Oh my God. She's so good. Premeditation is killing with, um, after consciously deciding to do so. The decision must be present in the mind at the time of the killing. And the law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of that thought, and uh, the, which is a premeditated intent to kill, and the actual killing. You jump out the car, you point a rifle at someone, and that thought is formed, and you shoot, and you pull the trigger, and you kill them. That could be your premeditation. I didn't know that. I didn't know premeditation could be that short amount of time, like a few seconds. Well, yeah, he's toasted. That's that's premeditated for sure. Like he hopped out the car thinking, if this guy doesn't give up his shit, I'm going to shoot him. They all went in the car and then they parked across the street from the vantage point to be able to see the victim's BMW i8 and wait for him. But eight minutes when you're waiting to take someone's life and by force shove a gun in their face is an eternity. So let's see how long eight minutes feels in 35 seconds. No way. She sits here for eight minutes. That's so smart to show the jury how long it is. Oh, this is so awkward. So ask yourselves, that's more than enough time to formulate the premeditated intent and think about what the three co-defendants were doing during that time. And they confirmed and looked up Jose Envoy's vehicle. Yeah, they looked up the pictures of his car to confirm it. They put masks on, they loaded their guns. These guys are evil, pure evil. Envoy's inside Reba doesn't have a clue that any of this is about to happen. That he only has eight minutes and 35 seconds left to live. Almost as if predators just waiting for their victim to come out. And as he's walking out and they spot him, the car's on, in drive, ready for Dietrich Williams to punch on the gas and immediately cut the victim off as he's trying to exit the parking lot. She's doing so good of painting the picture of the story. And Saying that he's working for the popo. He's working for the white man, and he's positively identified as the person who did it. Because they're guilty. Why? It is called consciousness of guilt. Yep, because there you go. Because if you know that you've murdered someone, and you're on trial for that murder, you're not going to say to the person, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because we used to be friends and I stayed at your house. He didn't say, why don't you tell him who really did it, Robert? What does he say? You're a snitch. That's another thing, you can ask yourself, why? If either of them are innocent of this homicide, why are they parking the getaway vehicle 
way down the block, where nobody lives there. They're not with Dietrich Williams. They're not with Robert Allen. They're by themselves. That's a great point, too. Why would they park the car so far if they weren't involved? They're two of the four killers. Why yep. would they be around? <clears throat> These videos are so cringe, I cannot do it. You can hear it with your own as you have been so gracious in paying attention to all the details that have been discussed and the evidence has been presented to you. Think about the things that we've talked about so far. I know I've been standing up here talking for a long time, but think about these things as you listen to the additional arguments and keep that common sense approach and keep that in mind that these defendants are guilty of the two offenses that we have charged them with. And I'll, I'll wrap up when I get that second opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Really good closing argument to start right there. So I guess here uh, is Trayvon Newsom's lawyer first. And if you do, if you listen to the law of the judge, you watch what you've already heard. And then look at what the state's evidence really is. Not what their argument is. Not what the possibilities of what they say are. But what their evidence proves or doesn't prove. You'll find Trayvon Newsom innocent of these charges. So Trayvon wasn't tracked there. There's evidence that he was in the car a lot that day. And he has a bunch of money too after. And Robert Allen snitched on him saying it was him in the car with them. And he was one of the gunmen. His lawyer's going to try to show reasonable doubt that he wasn't there. They failed to identify him, although they clearly saw who was there. And those witnesses knew. It wasn't Trayvon News. The state says Trayvon threatened Robert Allen. What testimony does he curse him? Not that he threatened him. Not in any way that he threatened him. He lost his cool. Deputy Alvarez was called by the state to back up the testimony of Robert Allen. Because I'm sure the state realized at that point you can't believe anything Robert Allen said. The state makes the point that the other two cones don't appear to stop in those PowerPoint presentation. So they had no time to drop off Trayvon. So he must have been with them the whole time. He wasn't with them at all. They didn't have to drop him off. And the evidence <laughs> proves that. Made very light up by the state, but Detective Curcio told you that the phone I wonder if he really believes this. Like if he's just doing his job and defending it. If he truly believes that Trayvon didn't do it, because I'm really confident Trayvon was the second gunman. Show a call a couple hours before this? And conspicuously a call at 4.02 p.m. in a totally different city. Is he a magician that he somehow made it those many miles in three or four minutes after this crime to try to mislead the jury later on? No, he was never there. The state says that State Run is bragging about having stolen victims' money. Do you hear anybody bragging? No, you hear music and you hear you see guys doing stupid stuff with money flashing. That's basically bragging. Flashing money is bragging. And the point I made with Detective Curcio that, hey, you know, in this social media age, if you go on the, the internet and look for people flashing money, you're going to see hundreds of people flashing money. Something big is done by young people these days. Not unless it does mean it means they're flexing money. You can still see the blood on there today. Yeah, if you look real close, it's a little bit of blood over here on the back. The front is like sandpaper. It's abrasive. If you're going to get DNA from your fingers by touching something, you couldn't find a better object to leave DNA on. They're really confident on the argument of uh, no DNA being on X's chain because they were trying to grab it. Clearly, they didn't get a hold of the chain because X was fighting them off. I feel like that's like quite obvious. All right, here's Diedrich's lawyer now. A lot of times I, I use that metaphor that many of them, they put it on and they'll come in here and they'll be like this man and this man. And I read it to the point that I've been, I've been doing this 20 years and I really think that, that in prosecutor school, day one is just pointing. The whole, the whole day, just practicing pointing. But in this country... You convict someone, you got the power of a point. You convict them on evidence. There's a lot of evidence that your client was there walking in on camera and then going back to the vehicle and never leaving the vehicle and admitted to being involved to his girlfriend and phone track. She's been put in a rough position because she has been given a cast of characters for witnesses that's akin to like the bad news bears of witnesses. But she was put in a very bad position when she had to take this case because the witnesses that she has don't have credibility. He's trying to shit all the witnesses right now, but literally everyone online says that he has a case that is so hard to defend. <laughs> like his case is impossible to defend. Well, I mean, between me and Dietrich, we call an interview with a vampire because he came in here and Mr. Shields had to tell him, hey, take your sunglasses off. He walked up there, he testified. What do we know about him? Well, we know that he asked uh, Mr. Onford for a picture. And when he didn't get it, the first thing he did while the guy was laying there dying is he went and he took that picture. Well, yeah, that witness is a weirdo. I don't really think that says your client is innocent at all, though. So if that doesn't tell you a little bit about his credibility, I don't know what does. I looked at him, and I was judging. I asked him if he was sober. He said he was. He didn't look to me to see whether or not that guy was credible. I don't think he was. How is he not credible? He's on camera watching the murder. He's just giving his weird witness testimony about taking a picture of X's body. Then we heard from Larry Kerr, the best-dressed Uber Lyft driver that I have ever seen in my life. That guy was Gucci down with the socks. But he, he wants us to believe that he lives... In a, in a multi million dollar house apartment, I mentioned he, that he makes all his money from Uber and Lyft, that he's not involved in, Jama in a Jamaican crime syndicate. However, he had two humongous bodyguards sitting here for two entire days. And when I pressed the line, when I pressed the line, what did he say? 
Um, no, my family pays for it. Okay, but who in your family? Uh, no, my family's for it. Why does it matter that X's step uncle has security and who pays for it? Like, that doesn't matter at all. You guys can make your own determination because honestly, I, I, I'm not going to say it because I've never been put in that particular position. I just think it's really strange that it took him that many minutes to approach the vehicle. He's saying it took minutes for X's step uncle to go up to the car. He's probably in shock. People react to different ways when shit like this happens. He's probably never been involved in something like this in his life. And he's probably scared to go over, over to the area and see what was going on. You know, this, and it's like a curse. I asked him also agreed that yeah, it's not the first time that he's constantly posting with money and yeah, listen, it's an indictment it's kind of on his personality, right? But it's not an admission of guilt. It isn't. It's kind of dumb. I don't think like I don't think that he should be doing it. It shows that it's kind of silly that you're doing it, but it's not. He just called his client dumb and silly. This guy is the little man syndrome. And you spend nine weeks trying to convict somebody that you think is guilty. You think if you win, you're not gonna go have a party? It's okay. it's okay. It's normal. You know what's not okay? To come in here on your own and then lie to a jury about it. Why? It's a simple question. I asked a lot of questions just to see what the response was, and that's one of them because the correct honest answer is yeah. Yeah, what, what's wrong with that? But he didn't say that. That's not the correct answer to celebrate. I wish we had maybe a video of him finding it, but apparently, even though BSO, everybody has cameras, coincidentally, a lead crime scene investigator working a homicide uh, uh, in our search warrant. So oh, he's trying to say the one bullet in his client's house, Diedrich's house. He's trying to say that they maybe planted it there. Right, it would have helped you guys, it would have solidified whether or not I'm, I'm saying that you, that you put that there. Well, if you had a video, we would, we would, have, to, we would have to think about it. Bro, just started leaning back. Look at this. And he is cool. so over this fucker. That I call him fat, and you know what? If anybody should be calling everybody fat, it's me. But it came out, and the moral story is that his obesity... Is Why does he keep bringing up Robert Allen being fat, dude? Some evidentiary value. Why? Because if you're saying that my client doesn't wear a mask while riding a dirt bike, you're too big to ride a dirt bike. The only reason that guy would ever get on a dirt bike is to take a picture and make a meme. There's no way a guy that size is ever going to ride a dirt bike. And so... Unfortunately, his size is evidentiary value in this case. Another this guy is just waffling about nothing and uh, uh, holy. Why does it matter if Robert Allen's fat, dude? Another thing is is is, is that Robert Allen. I will get to this. Robert Allen was simply too large to be, be involved. In you know what I mean? They would have been like, yeah, you know, it, it was the it was the big guy that was here half an hour ago. It, it would have been clear. Regarding Drake and Eagles, you know what? We didn't drag Drake and Eagles into this. We didn't. Okay. Yeah, you and did. Because yes, you did drag Drake, Drake and Migos in this. Dude, I don't even want to watch him talk about Drake and Migos. It's so stupid. That's the gist of the first of the uh, closing arguments. I'll keep covering this until this ends. So, if you're new to my channel, subscribe for my Twitter and Instagram. I fucking love you, boys.